architectural, the foundation for the agility. And so that's what that's the focus of this discussion today. Uh, so we'll be talking about more about agile, cheap data provisioning, fields and bottom-up modeling, virtual integration, relational data lakes, incremental data warehouse, flexible EDW and mixed architectures, and how do you support innovation and rapid prototyping. So those are the topics that we'll focus on. But mainly I wanted to underline here that that architecture, even if we achieve all this, that points that with respect to simple and flexible architecture, if you don't put in the right agile, the processes and organization, then uh, it's difficult to achieve agility. So with that, Glenn, I'm going to take over the BW4 HANA overview. Sure. Thanks, Blintik. I really appreciate your comments. And, and um, th those are extremely valuable pieces of input. I, I heard a couple of great presentations just coming off Sapphire last week from one customer and then um, some other participants at Sapphire about this topic of Agile. So any of the folks on the phone who were at um, Sapphire last week, it, it pretty much echoes what uh, Buntik has summarized here on the agility side. Uh, and, and then, of course, leads into, you know, what has the product done recently to help with this agility story as well. You know, the, the, the process and the methodology is important. Having a scrum master is, is important as one of the um, customers pointed out at Sapphire, that's the chief role in this, in, in making this agile thing work. Um, and it, it, well, with the scrum method, at least, there are other methods, of course. But on the, the solution side, of course, things have changed fairly dramatically and they've, they've continued to change UW for HANA was released almost two years ago now in September of 2016, so more than two years ago. I was going to say almost three years, going on the third year here. Um, and part of that whole evolution was to, to indeed facilitate this idea of Agile. And you see sort of a, a picture of this is more of a reference slide for you to come back to, but you see a picture of some of the engines that underwent an overhaul let's say, in, in BW4, and have continued to evolve on into BW4 2.0, which was just released back in February of this year, 2019. So that, that overhaul is continuing. There's continuing and continuous improvement based on feedback from customers and active customers with the BW solution. And one of the overarching messages, of course, is this is not your, your father's data warehouse. Our, uh, Bundik mentioned how long ago he had started with BW. I started in the same time frame. Things were different when VW first came out, different market conditions, different expectations, different hardware for sure. And so VW today is not the VW of yesterday that if you've had negative experiences and there's a lot to look at in the new VW. A couple of sidebars here. One is that you'll notice prominently in this diagram, the concept of workspaces. And it's not to go long on this topic, but this was mentioned prominently in SAP's announcement last week at Sapphire around this data warehousing cloud offering. And I've gotten a lot of questions over the last week. So just to take that head on here, this workspaces idea started in BW um, prior to BW for HANA has continued into BW for HANA and will continue on into our cloud-based offering, which the plan is to have tight integration with BW for HANA in a a hybrid scenario, meaning you can publish scenarios from BW4 into the data warehousing cloud in the future. This is not current functionality, but just announced, you know, a mere six, six, seven days ago now. But we've got um, plans to move in that direction and to build on the success of BW4 HANA on-prem and take some of those capabilities into the cloud. We've been talking about that for, for well over a year, and it, it fits right into this, the story of agility of providing, you know, quick turnaround on new capabilities deployed via the cloud to then marry with um, robust and highly governed solutions that potentially are implemented in, in BW for HANA. There are also, you know, options for agility on-prem with BW4 here, as is pointed out in several respects. The analytics uh, cloud, the SAP analytics cloud is now, what we would consider to be the native interface uh, for BW4 HANA from a cloud perspective, and then the, the business objects suite, the SAP BI 
solution set here being the on-prem native front ends for um, BW for HANA. And that by itself changes the game dramatically from a, a BW perspective, especially towards the idea of agility and, and being able to deploy easily and, and with zero footprint in the case of the analytics cloud, if that's a direction that's important for you. For you. The other big one is, of course, the overhaul of the BW4 modeling tools. So you're now working in Eclipse, and that is the go forward still with BW4 HANA 2.0. There's still an Eclipse-based plugin that gives you the, the new modeling and end-to-end -end design capability in BW4 HANA in conjunction with this workspaces functionality that I, I mentioned earlier. The other overall arching statement here is just that, that BW4 HANA, of course, received a, a complete overhaul that is an ongoing uh, topic uh, with BW4 2.0 being based on the 1809 ABAP stack. There were significant enhancements to the integration of ABAP and HANA itself that BW then leverages in terms of push down, the ability to leverage um, engines behind the scenes, such as the, the geospatial engine and some of the predictive uh, analysis library items that are available at the engine level in HANA and could potentially be called by BW routines. And so the other thing that expands consistently is the HANA platform's capability to, um, to ingest data through this EIM stack you see pictured here. That's basically the incorporation of ELT functionalities and ETL capabilities into the HANA platform. And BW, of course, directly leverages that alongside of the native integration with SAP solutions. And that's where you see this ODP framework. The nice thing about ODP is it preserves the past in terms of your extractor infrastructure, but it's also a nice transition into the, the new SAP to SAP integration infrastructure, which what you realize in the S4 HANA product line. There you have CDS views to base things on and can do real-time extraction or real-time data access without extraction from uh, data sources that are, that are ODP and CDS view enabled. S4 HANA Cloud is just announced the publishing of CDS view based extractors, and those will be coming in the future to future releases of S4 HANA as, as the portfolio expands. The good news is that those extractors, from a, a, a look and feel perspective, will look very similar to the old extractors, so there's some correlation there and not a disruptive do over scenario, but much more of a transitional um, approach so that you have, again, this agility preserved that. that Wintick was mentioning. You can go to the next slide, Wintick. We'll just yes, mention a few of these um, on the product side focused on agility. Um, it's a bit hard to see in this slide, but you can take a look at it more closely and we know when to download these slides. Um, just purely reducing the number of, of objects in the system in terms of simplifying the data modeling options and approach in, in BW4 HANA. This is an ongoing process. And again, it works hand in glove with, with HANA as the platform itself, especially in the realm of composite providers, their capabilities, how they interact with other applications like, for existence, for example, rather, if you're a BPC customer, that composite provider is front and center in, in terms of BPC and how it leverages push down into the planning functions that are now um, available in, in BW for HANA in conjunction with BPC. On the data flow side, I mentioned that the data modeler really helps with, with this side of things in terms of giving a visual representation. This is not a screenshot of that, but a logical representation that it allows this collapse of layers typically with through virtualization of the upper layers in ways that we just couldn't pursue realistically with um, other database flavors. And then in the early stages of BW on HANA, of course, the most of the focus was getting um, BW to, to interact with the HANA database and not necessarily a full effort towards optimization in the way that things have been overhauled for BW for HANA. The last set of um, icons here is, is related to the ongoing adaptation and increase in the number of platforms that can be addressed through the smart data tools, specifically smart data integration. Um, and the number of data sources that are expanding there, it has a separate release cycle 
and it's always worth, worth taking a look at the PAM to see how that develops over time. And then, as I mentioned, SAP data is also undergoing a renovation in terms of integration through this ODP source system type and improved communication with SAP data sources as well as consistency across ERP the, the ERP solution, which used to have different types of extractors, but then also consistency across applications, like I mentioned, um, with the um, the Esron a cloud solution adopting ODP, the cloud for customer in the in the in the CRM space that already adopted ODP infrastructure for extraction, and you'll see that ongoing into the C for HANA world, for example. The other big news, of course, is that we do have tight integration with Hadoop through our big data source system, and that that's to whatever extent big data is a part of your world. We've got solutions to cover that. Next slide, Quintic. Just the last section here for me to delve into is just to touch to touch on some of the changes that are available to you. And, and many of you probably already know this and have experimented with it, but others it seems haven't really delved into this and, and checked it out. But it really centers on this virtualization aspect of uh, of BW for HANA and changing the game as far as not having to fully model your star schema in particular the master data through info objects before you ever get started with with bw for hana and what that means for for you as a, a customer is is that the feedback from customers who've adopted bw for hana is directly in as far as improvement is directly in this realm of increased agility through the use of these virtualized data providers in particular the composite provider also something called the open ODS, which allows consumption of data from external data sources very much as it sits and looks in that external data source without having to fully model it in BW for HANA, taking a very lightweight modeling approach and then incorporating heavier weight, more robust modeling when and if it makes sense for that particular scenario. Um, as you can see here, this is tightly tied to the topics of predictive analytics and machine learning. One of the things that, that customers are doing now is, is leveraging that investment they've made in the past on BW by bringing it up to, up to current technology with BW for HANA and then incorporating that historical data into predictive analytics exercises and, and letting the system do discovery amongst the data that they've harvested over you know, the space of five to 10 or 20 years, depending on how long they've had that, that BW system. Part of that's facilitated, as the bottom of the diagram here mentions, by balancing a BW approach and a, a native HANA modeling approach. There's not a right answer. There's not a decision tree that says, you know, in this scenario, you will model with BW. In this scenario, you will model with um, native SQL. Basically, we've allowed most scenarios to be fairly open with the, the flexibility of the BW side, of course, having um, you know, long-standing and maybe established uh, principles of governance around security and and um, details of of how data is accessed that somewhat reflect your ERP system, and so it carries some weight in terms of properly securing the data together, and then the more agile access may be oriented in the native SQL approach towards non-SAP environments to allow quick and and easy access via experts who understand those data sources in a language they understand, which would be the SQL approach that, that's mentioned here. Those two can be mixed and matched uh, at will and provide this interoperability that, that's mentioned here. And then of course, BI clients can consume the mixed uh, modeling through the composite provider that's exposed on the BW side. So lots more to be said here. Um, take a look at, at sessions that will be focused on in TechEd, this is a hot topic, and one that will expand as this data warehousing cloud comes into focus to provide you know, robust, uh, lightweight scenarios in the cloud, very similar to what we do nowadays in SCP, but there is an evolution there towards this, this new topic and tight integration to BW for HANA. Quintic, back to you. Sure. Thanks, Glenn. 
So one, one point, I think Glenn did touch upon this mixed architecture, right? When we work with our customers, there's a common confusion with whether we should go with BW approach or should we do a native HANA EDW? And both, as Glenn went, both has its merits and, you know, works well in, in, you know, based on the use cases, the analytics use cases. But what I find compelling with the BW for HANA, it supports both approaches. So you're not forced to do just the BW approach, ADSOs or composite providers, or you can, you know, not force one way or the other. So based upon a use case, you can decide whether to start with the foundation with the native HANA approach, native HANA tables and views. And then if you want to consume BI or analytics on the, using the analytics engine, BW analytics engine, then you can build composite providers on top of it. That's how interoperable this, this architecture is. Um, so it's not either or, you can mix it together. And that's what I would recommend actually, have mixing it together, you know, leveraging best of both worlds. So just a quick, you know, point on that. Uh, with that, let's look at, uh, you know, now that we covered the key points on, you know, key benefits of BW from an agility, key drivers, simplified data flows and simplified models and the comprehensive access to all data and the mixed architecture. Now let's see how we can leverage all this to, uh, you know, implement some new development methodologies, right? So like looking at some of the common challenges with SAP BW, typically there's a big design of front, complex modeling effort and then data persistence, to, you, know, you, you stage data in multiple uh, layers and lag in data availability. Then, you know, you typically do data loads twice or, you know, once or twice in a day. Um, because of that, inside delivery takes hours and days. And, and then one common challenge is that BW doesn't have all the data needed. Mostly, you know, some statistics say that 45% of the data is outside of the enterprise systems. How do we bring all that? Then data quality and trust in data has been a common challenge. It's, a, it's been a key challenge as well. Uh, and then, as we mentioned, lack of agility, long wait times for BI requests have been a uh, you know, common complaint with BW, um, have, you know, with, with businesses questioning the ROI, ROI from all this investment because of the lack of agility. And then to look at BW, it's main, mostly IT driven governance. And typically you see lack of business engagement after some point. Uh, so it's mainly IT driven governance, right? So that's some of the common characteristics or challenges with SAP BW. So how would a classic SAP BW development process would work. You have, you know, you, you know, typically do top-down modeling. We look at the visualizations and reporting for the business. We gather reports and visualize, you know, the visualization request. Then we start the modeling effort. You, you know, develop the design, the info object, the staging layer, all the mandatory layers, right? That means you need to stage in multiple layers, then the virtualization and the visualization. Uh, so mostly top-down modeling with extensive data modeling effort. And one key thing to note is with BW, we will do most of the, all the transformations on the persistent objects. So if you do the L1 DSO, then the L2 DSOs, where, where you do some transformations and, you know, harmonization. And then, then there are a lot of cases you need a level three DSO as well, where you do further business rules and, you know, applications. So, so, so the transformations are done on the per, typically done on the persistent objects, and that adds to the risk, right? So when there's a change request coming in, now your the, the impact to that that change is huge in all those persistent layers and all wherever we do the transformation. So that that's the main cause of the lack of agility there. That's why any BI requests take longer time to you know uh, deliver. Um, and then, of course, that leads to extensive testing effort as well. So these are typical characteristics of uh, a classic SAP BW development process. Now let's look at how you could redefine that with BW for HANA. So first of all, your top-down modeling that you currently do, if you're happy with that, you can continue to do that, no issues with that. So you can, the process of capturing the visualization report, then designing the info objects and the layers, BW for HANA completely supports that. Or you could actually look at a bottom-up modeling approach where you do some minimal design, and we'll talk more about that approach in the next few slides. 
but you could actually source data, rapidly stage data and raw, raw reports on, on based on field-based modeling without even creating info objects and so forth. And then provision those raw content in production system to users for immediate consumption and feedback. So the users could, you know, could deliver some raw reports on production or users can create their own analytics and then get feedback. So once they look at the data, they understand the data, develop their stories from the data, and then get feedback from the business, and then you can build on the more formalized data structure. So that's the change in how you do the modeling. It's more a bottom-up approach. And then do the visualization and so forth, and whether it is self-serve analytic, whether the business would de define their own visualization or or IT can provision the visualization as well. But the change here is that you, you rapidly stage data in this case, and then provision the raw reports and content to users so that they can start working on the data as, you know, as soon as possible, and then, and then develop the formalized structure in an incremental manner. So, so the key, you know, key points to remember this, the BW4 HANA follows a lean architecture that enables high speed analytics at any layer. Because earlier with BW, we would discourage people from reporting on the L1 BSOs or L2, they say that, okay, do it on the info cubes or, you know, at a, you know, more aggregated level. But now you can actually do analytics at any layer. So you write, right as soon as you stage the data, you can do the analytics right there. And then another point to remember is that most of the BW4 HANA and SAP HANA ETW, whichever approach you take, you can do most of the transformations with the virtual objects. So in the calculation view, build up your transformations in the calculation view. So it's virtual objects. So it's not done on the person. So that's a more less risky development effort. And then of course, you know, the key concept of display data quickly and worry about modeling later. That's the key shift, right? Paradigm shift from what we used to do with SAP BW. So along with that, right, taking that concept a little further, right? So the concept of we hear data lake as, you know, the, the terminology quite a bit. Right? So if you take that concept further that we discussed staging the raw data, if you can imagine the raw data as the data lake here, as you see here. So using the data lake, you stage the data, the tables or data from the source system into this data lake within the BW4 or HANA EDW uh, and in HANA tables. And then, then, they, then, then deliver, you know, provision that raw data to the end users for data science, app development, or analytics, but then continue building the data warehouse on the data log using the data lake as the foundation. So data lake as the foundation for the data warehouse, right? Ingestion layer can, that, 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 data, layer, that a data lake can function as a data lake or the corporate memory. So you have, now in this case, you have a single place for the structured and unstructured data. And eliminating data duplication. So because if you have a separate data lake somewhere, then you're replicating data, you just love that habit within one, one EDW platform, supporting both the bottom up and top down modeling and then incremental modeling on uh, virtual objects. And then as I mentioned earlier, uh, BI tools can connect to any layer for high speed analytics. Now, another concept that we wanted to discuss was more an innovation system, right? BW4 HANA. So again, keeping the theme of enabling agile and self-serve analytics. So, so you have, and this landscape you see, dev, QA, production is pretty common everywhere. Everyone can relate to it. You have so, so you load data from source systems into the production systems, and then you have analytics or reports on top. So if you have a, and, and a lot of the clients have sandbox system, right? So similar to that, if you have a innovation system, a sandbox system, but it's more formalized sandbox system, a BW4 HANA innovation system, and then refresh data from the production system into this innovation system twice a month, twice a month, as, you know, based on the constraints from the IT department and so forth. Uh, then you, and then of course you have, you now have the comprehensive access to all data. You can now do have persistent or even virtual data access to the 
production system and the uh, you know all the SAP and non SAP system the the innovation system. So now you have more data from the production BW4 system here plus the immediate you know data that current data from the source system. So you can merge all that and then now and enable and basically allow provision that for innovation and rapid prototyping. So now you can have visualization, predictive modeling and forecasting. So it's more of a way of providing the business with the innovation system, having them, enabling them to, giving them full access to this innovation system, and then having them, you know, if they, they need to do, test out the new business strategies or do rapid prototyping of their business, you know, analytics requirements, you can enable all that. And then once you go through that process, if if those if they want to use those strategies and analytics use cases more in a formalized manner, then of course you can formalize the models and develop and go through the regular dev QA production cycle. So what you're doing is you're more doing a pilot or prototyping in the BW4 HANA innovation system. And then once the business you know is able to develop the story and understand the data, develop the analytics use case then formalize in the regular landscape. So that's the idea of the innovation system. And the, with the BW4 HANA architecture, SAP HANA EDW really supports this kind of a process actually. Um, and then of course you have your governance where it is very strong on the regular production landscape, but a very light governance on the innovation system. So as I mentioned earlier, this type of innovation system can be used to rapidly validate new ideas or hypotheses uh, and test out new business strategies and so forth. Typically used for more predictive, prescriptive, cognitive analytics and self-serve models. Um, but then of course, you can always apply and socialize lessons learned from this lab environment to BI initiatives. And the key thing is to, uh, you know, the, this cannot, of, of the BW for HANA cannot exist on its own, right? Where the, the business cannot manage it on its own. Obviously, the IT will have to support this innovation lab architecture, different ways of supporting this, but um, something that, uh, you know, organizations can look at to drive more agility and self-service. Another concept, actually, this is more a, so it's a case study of, for the, you know, so a lot of the concepts that I discussed in the last couple of slides, I'd like to, you know, present that in terms of case study, actual case studies of customers, how they are uh, developing or leveraging these capabilities within BW for HANA. So in this case, uh, uh, the case study is for a sales analytics, requirement was for sales analytics. And with the traditional approach, this was the plan, actually, original plan, scoping and design for three weeks, and then data acquisition, focusing on the ETL modeling and development effort, and then you know formalizing the data models, the testing and provisioning analytics, you know, typical BW development approach. And obviously the inside delivery in this case takes weeks and months. If I add up those weeks, I think it comes to three to five, four months. Um, so that's that was the initial plan for development for the sales analytics. Uh, so the requirements will need to be clearly, clearly outlined right in the beginning. You're planning to use a waterfall project methodology and then insights are provision to the business at, at the end of the project. So then we try to, you know, work with a more an incremental EDW approach, incremental delivery of sales analytics. And that is the approach that you're seeing here. So first doing a scope with a minimal design, scoping and design three days. So what that means is you don't have time to do modeling or design or anything, understand basic the data sets that needs that the business would need to do that analysis develop the data lake as we specified, you know, outlined earlier, right? building on raw tables. So replicate, rapidly replicate the tables in native HANA, you know, or native HANA tables without any transformation, and then provisioning the insights on raw data. So deliver that initial insights on raw data within two weeks, and then, then have, you know, get user feedback, they work with the, data and you know develop the stories and formalize the models uh, you know based on those stories and provision so that was another 10 weeks of designing and provisioning insights incrementally so the advantage here was that you know as i mentioned earlier most of the analytics part of the issue is that users don't understand what really know what they need until they see it right 
So now they are, we are providing the data, they're able to work with the data and really come out with the actual analytics use cases. Uh, so it's a different approach and a process to look at. It's not, as I mentioned earlier, it's not an architectural issue alone, it's a, it's a methodology and process. Uh, but the architecture now supports this kind of a process actually. Uh, so that's why you know, I mentioned earlier, we need to look at new development methodologies when you look at BWB for HANA. Uh, so very, very interesting case study that we wanted to you know, uh, share with you, you know, how you can do more incremental and responsive approach. It, it, the incremental means you, you, increment, you, you, don't, you deliver analytic solutions in increments. The reason it's, it's responsive is that now it's more responsive to user requirements now because now they look at it, they, you know, they can provide feedback, business can provide feedback, and they can build based on that. The next case study uh, is more uh, on the lines for the agile EDW development on SAP S4 HANA, because if you look at BW for HANA, HANA EDW, the integration with S4 and managing analytics use cases in conjunction with S4 HANA is very critical. Um, so, so this company is undertaking a digital ERP transformation project on S4 HANA. And the key challenge that they were trying to address was, you know, lack of agility with SAP, uh, demand for SAP BW, demand for self-service analytics and data science platforms. So business was demanding for a platform where they can test out their data science or you know more advanced analytics, predictive analytics. So they so the sales team wanted to develop sales strategies in, in rapidly. They don't want to go through the typical EGW processes. So fast moving business and need immediate access to raw data. So the EDW the EDW process are too slow for that. And then of course one other concern was the cost of HANA. They're thinking that if you do everything on HANA it's too expensive. So this is the current state, right? They have ECC, BW, HANA sidecar, other data sources, and then they have a variety of BW to you know, BI tools uh, you currently in use, use. So then the initial option they considered, what is this, what you see here on this diagram here. So you have, they deploy the S4 HANA, they keep the BW for some of the existing use cases and the HANA sidecar as well deploy a BW for HANA, Greenfield BW for HANA system, more for reporting and analytics for S4 HANA. Uh, and then deploy a data lake, actually, an Azure data lake as an advanced analytics platform, where all the SAP, non-SAP data source are just into this data lake. And then they also went with more of a bring your own tool kind of a view. So the business can bring, bring their own tools, connect to and the data lake and you know, report out of it. Obviously, this approach, it looked great. Uh, it, it offered a little bit cheaper option to HANA data, HANA lake, but there are challenges here. If you look at it, then you know, the, the main challenge was data duplication because you cannot do away with, you cannot move all reporting to this data lake. So you have to stage data both in the BW for HANA and the SAP data lake. So, so the original problem that BW did not have all the data that will apply to the data lake also, unless you stage all data there and stage all data here, then you have multiple versions of the truth. And then it's data lake and EDW, so are separate processes and difficult to manage and go on. That realize that state, although it looks good on paper, it's practically managing these two approaches would be, would, would be more complicated. And then the key thing that we realized was, was that this approach would not be completely aligned with SAP S4 HANA's analytics, which is more based on embedded analytics and augmented analytics principle. The key thing there is the closing the gap between insight and action. So if you dump all the data to another external data lake, and there's a data latency there, lack in data availability, some of these problems that we discussed still exist and with more complications. So that was the first option and the challenges that we saw with this option. Then we looked at, uh, you know, looked at more uh, this whole incremental ETW or HANA data lake option. So, um, so, they, so these were the data sources here as for HANA other sources. So first thing is, how do we handle the operational analytics, right? How do you do the embedded intelligence, augmented analysis, financial planning analysis, and contextualizing site? So for that, clearly the choice was the 
embedded analytics, the CDS view, the op, you know, the uh, operational analytics on the uh, embedded analytics. But then, of course, that, that is only part of the analytics puzzle, right? There's more strategic analytics, the tactical analytics, more advanced analytics. So you need an EGW platform for that. Um, so, so, so then, you know, that's where the BW for HANA EGW come, came into play. But in this case, you know, we said, okay, let's look at the data lake, include the data lake within the BW for HANA EGW itself on the SAP HANA platform. Um, so with using mainly the HANA tables, mostly native HANA modeling there. And then, um, you know, have implementing a DT or data temperature management solution with warm and cold storage to manage the cost of the SAP, the data. So seamlessly managing that there. And then obviously the data warehouse, the greenfield data warehouse they were talking about earlier would be based on the data lake itself you know, building all the formalized data structures there. And then, um, of course, then, then still support the bring your own tool, uh, you know, but again, this EDW, which, which is kind of data lake is within that EDW itself. And then the, we implemented, you know, designed the innovation system there, which will facilitate the data science and app development, the predictive analytics and so forth. So, so the key benefit that we saw of this was that you have one system, a single place of data source for all data here, and then implementing the, you know, the uh, DTO allows for more managing the cost of the data. But even otherwise, you, you th by not staging this in two different places, using it in one EDW platform, using the data lake as a foundation for the EDW, that you know you you reduce the data replication data persistency there and that itself is a huge cost saving and then implementing the some of these processes that we talked about from our governance you know allowing for more of a uh, agile and self-service analytics which now the platform sap hana platform sap hana EW and pw for hana supports we are, we are able to deliver more an integrated and unified analytics platform addressing the challenges. So, so I think those are the, you know, so before if there's no DW for HANA, you would be looking at something like this. And that's what we found interesting in here with all the architecture, leveraging the mixed architecture, the, you know, the simplicity, the incremental EW, applying all that into a more an ERP transformation project. All right, so what are some of the key paradigm shifts enabled by BW for HANA? So load first and understand later. So those are first pure EDW folks who started working on EDW or BW since 96, 97 timeframe. This is, this is not a you know, concept that we would understand easily, right, BW. So we don't, you know, we, we, we understand things that then load data, ETL process and transfer. What we are saying that, you know, Load first, understand later, display data quickly and worry about modeling later. And then another concept you could think about is learn and burn, where you, you could actually not even formalize models, right? Just build, build some data, raw data for short usage or in a limited time. And then once you, you, you know, business would self-serve insights on the day, raw data and delete after use, you may not even need to uh, you know, uh, need to formalize those data models. Maybe the innovation system can be used for that. Then high-speed analytics at any layer, bottom-up modeling for fast, low-cost solution increments, and cheap and agile data provisioning on data lakes on the relational data lake on SAP HANA, uh, rapid prototyping of business scenarios using the innovation system. All this actually provides this, you know, an opportunity to rethink analytics development, and it takes a lot of effort, right? It goes against a lot of the concepts that we learned from earlier EDW days, rethinking that, revamping the processes and organization to support this kind of uh, uh, this kind of these these development strategies and be building an agile and responsive EDW. So, key takeaways uh, before we get there, Glenn. Anything you would like to add? No, I think you just built on what we were talking about earlier in the presentation. So, these are real customer scenario, so it's good information. The key takeaway is, as I, I couldn't underline it more, the, you know, 
all the strategies and you know that architecture wouldn't work unless you have the processes and organization in place to support the, the agility trend. So I've seen customers build the architecture right, but not focusing on the processes and organization, and that that you know that really doesn't deliver agility. Then mixed architecture on SAP BW for HANA enables best of both worlds approach, manage EW and agile EDW. However, you could go either way, right? Go with agile EDW approach all the way, and that is fine, and that will work as well. Basically, a native HANA SQL modeling approach or the BW for HANA modeling approach. So, as we have seen, BW for HANA supports different modeling patterns that enable agile and flexible development. So it's important to identify that and develop best practices and design principles within your organization to support this. Then combine the flexibility of the data lake and virtualization capabilities within EW, the data warehouse to deliver data as a service. Consider a responsive and incremental EDW approach to allow users to understand the data better as we discussed earlier. And then of course, formalizing an agile methodology because if you have to deliver this solution, agile analytic solutions in increments, you need a solid methodology to go along with that. Uh, foster innovation and rapid prototype on an SAP HANA, BW for HANA, BW innovation system. So we talked about the benefit of the innovation system. And, and at that, that I, I'm a big proponent of that actually, because I think that will be for, deliver a lot of values to the business and IT actually, because even the IT can use that as their own innovation system to speed up the development process and reduce the risk, right? Instead of developing on the development QA and then moving into production, they can develop on the innovation system. And, and then once they get the models right, the, you know, the design right, then implement it on the dev QA landscape model. So, and the, as the BW4 HANA architecture or the HANA EDW architecture supports that kind of an innovation system now. Revamp governance and control processes to align with agility and self-serve consumption of analytics. Those, those are the key takeaways. And with that, we have a few minutes left for some questions, actually. So Jennifer, do you have any questions on the chat or anything? Yeah, just wanted to, you know, Glenn Buntick, thank you so much. And we, we hope everyone found, you know, today's webinar helpful. Um, I think at this time, we'll go ahead and unmute everyone's line um, for questions. Um, you can still, if you prefer to ask questions through the chat or Q&A window, you can do that. And we'll, you know, Buntick and Glenn will make sure to, you know, answer those questions along with, you know, the, the the few that were, you know, um, asked during the webinar and, you know, once everyone has finished asking questions. So um, I think Deepu, if you don't mind, if you can just open all lines now and please feel free everyone to ask any questions that you have. Thanks again for joining. Yeah, so I see some questions on chat. Would you like me to take it on or, you know? Okay. Glenn, do you see these questions as on the Q and A actually? So one question yep. is, yeah. Rather than having an innovation system, what are your thoughts on allowing for model development based on virtualization directly in the production system? Do you recommend building composite provider calculation views directly in production to respond faster to business requirements? Okay, so if I understood this question, that I think the, the question is, why instead of spending all the effort in the innovation system, why can't we build that on the production system itself, an innovation kind of a process with the production system. And you could do that actually, so, but the problem, the risks are higher here. Now you need more governance managing it. So you have, so the whole idea that, you know, technically I think BW for an obviously supports that and the ways to secure the memory usage and, you know, the, the capacity within the production system. but. Having this kind of a separate system, BW for HANA, I think it's much more productive and efficient there and, and truly provide the business the kind of the self-source system, more control over their analytics use case. So that's why I would prefer more this BW for HANA innovation system approach. The next one is with respect to the 
with respect to the B4 HANA innovation system, typically what is the role of IT in this process? Would IT own the innovation system or is it typically business owned? Okay, um, very, very, very good question actually. So it's a process and governance issue. I think if you look at it, the innovation system that you see here, it can't function without IT support and management to a certain extent. Because if you have to connect to this usual virtual access, connection, SDI, SDI, and some of the modeling would require IT support. Uh, so IT would require, would need to have that, you know, would need to support this kind of system. So how you would do that, there are many ways of doing it. You can actually assign one architect, you know, depending upon the size of your organization, one architect to this innovation system, or have assigned percentage of many of the, you know, one or two resources to the system. So for agile development, right? So they will work 75% of the time on like 50% of the time on the more the uh, managed, uh, you know, request, you know, managed requirements. But just for the one side and the other 50% or more to support agility and innovation system. So definitely it needs the, uh, it needs the, you know, the IT support and management in this case. Anything else, Glenn, would you like to add anything there? No, I, I think you covered it pretty well. I mean, it's, it's, it's trading off one set of um, things to manage for, for another you know, in the process. So I've seen a, a lot of differing opinions from customers over the years on this exact topic. So I think you, did, you covered the, the gamut. Hmm. The next question, and let me know, Glenn, you, you're saying that what's your experience of using BW for HANA with Tableau? Do you like to take on Then I can chime in as well. Yeah, I mean, th that's a, also a, an area where customers have a lot of varied experience. Um, I think things have improved recently. Just was talking with a, a customer yesterday that's going through a POC exercise for precisely this sort of integration. Um, they're, they're happy with it. It is, in my opinion, was a bit of a limited scope in that particular situation. I have heard some challenges when you scale more towards an enterprise approach to, um, you know, using Tableau, just in general, Tableau, even if it's not BW as the data source. So um, some customers have, have found that to be true. Others, they're, they're dyed in the wool Tableau shops, and, and that's what they're going to use. And they work around some of those those challenges. So I think from our perspective, we try to stay a little bit front end neutral for, for BW for HANA, but of course there are reasons why SAC or our business objects portfolio would would be a preferred client from SAP side, but we don't impose that on customers. Would we be able to, the next question, would we be able to apply the development agility concepts to if you go with a pure native HANA EDW, not BW EDW? I think so. I think the, the concepts that we discussed can be applied as we meant, you know, Glenn and I covered the mixed architecture. You can go with either approach and apply the same concepts, um, or you can go with a mixed architecture as well. The next question is the any performance issues with Tableau, uh, Glenn, you know, along same along the lines of the question you fielded now. Have you seen any how you, what's your perspective on the performance issues with Tableau? Yeah, I think this was a fairly common challenge, you know, up until maybe um, six to nine months ago, things have improved. I don't know about every every permutation of what um, your specific scenario is here. Uh, Venkatesha asked about, but um, that's probably you know something you you definitely want to pay some attention to in in the testing phase prior to, to release because I know it's been a pain point in the past. I think things have gotten better in general, but maybe not in the specific, depending on what you're doing. Want to take the next one also, Glenn? Success factors. Yeah, so th this is also a uh, a common question, and there are a couple of of responses, and and you know, there's the here and now, and what you're doing. I mean, one of the things I think that happens is this does get a little bit overplayed. 
in terms of it being a what if question. Um, one thing that, that I found with customers in, in asking about the cloud solutions in general to keep in mind is that a good deal of the transactional data is going to go back into your ERP system. I mean, that's the whole reason you have success factors is to integrate it with, with then your, your ERP solution. If that's SAP on the back end, then you're in good shape for a good portion of the data. And depending on what you have implemented in success factors, that could range from, you know, 60 to 90% of what you need from an analytics perspective. And that then the remainder is is what you have to deal with in the scenario you've got you're asking about here. So right now, what I know customers are, are working with is either using their previous integration methods, which range from you know other third party integration solutions to flat files. But then there's also the other end of the spectrum where people have have used the SAP Cloud Platform integration to provide that hybrid cloud to on-prem um, solution that, that's, that's looked for by customers. So those, those are some of your options. And there's more forthcoming in BW for HANA 2.0. There's some web interfacing and some plans to integrate with the API effort of SAP overall to allow BW to subscribe the data through that method as well. I think we're right at two o'clock. I put this one roadmap question. Do you have a quick, maybe we can take that real quick, Glenn. From a roadmap standpoint, it is, will BW4 will still be innovated with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you take a look at sap.com slash roadmaps, there are already um, forward-looking statements there about some of the general things that we plan to incorporate with um, in 2021 and 2022 for BW for HANA 2.0. Um, in addition, a, a good deal of the discussion around the data world and cloud is how it will integrate for BW4 customers in particular to um, maybe go as far as publish BW4 content into that cloud solution for a, quick, a quicker and easier, more ubiquitous data access method. That, that's not set in stone by any stretch just yet, but those are some of the early discussions about where that could head, where that could go. Okay. Jennifer, anything else or? I don't think so, Buntik. I think yeah, you all the questions. Okay. Thank you all so much, Buntik, Glenn. Thank you. And thank everyone that joined and, you know, hope you found it helpful and, um, you know, there's some contact details on the slide here if you'd like to reach out to, you know, us or Glenn, um, you know, with any additional questions or, you know, if you'd like to discuss any of these topics further. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a great Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, calling into this webinar. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you.